I want to talk about the growth in whiskey and brown spirits uh, in the United States because what we're seeing is in premium, sc single malt scotch is growing at 79%. That's extraordinary. But then when you look at super premium, right, the growth is much higher in bourbon than it is in scotch. How do you compete as a scotch distiller, as a scotch blender uh, with, with the changing taste in the American market? How do you sell that here? Okay. The, the way we look upon it, Brendan, is that the growth in bourbon bourbon and other craft US whiskies is actually good for the whole category. So it gets nice coverage, people learn about whiskey, and I think a lot of high-end whiskey consumers are not content just to try one style. So they'll try bourbon, they'll try Tennessee, they'll try scotch, try Japanese. So we, we view things like that as actually very positive. So they'll always come back to scotch in the end? I think so. I think it will always be part of the repertoire. I want to talk about whiskey a little bit uh, as as an investment. Uh, you uh, you know a couple months ago let me taste this extraordinary ten thousand yeah. dollar set yeah. of whiskeys yeah. that you found from yeah. the 70s. Yeah. One of them from my birth year. But it turns out there's some actual data behind this, which yeah. is um, investments in rare scotch yeah. are actually outpacing other assets yeah. right now. Um, you know the oldest stuff you said is not as good. The stuff from the 60s. Yeah. When we talk about the scotch, that's really an investment. Mm. What is it exactly? Yeah. Is it single malts from the 70s? What is it that's yeah. actually earning that money? I, I think the main thing is it's something that is very rare, very very hard to come by. And you know, if we do a single cask bottling or something like the Glenmorangie 1970 set, of which there were only 10 in the whole world, a lot of people want to invest in that because it is just so collectible. So difficult to get. Now obviously as a distiller it makes me slightly sad to think that all of these lovely collectible whiskies are not going to be drunk but that is the reality of it. So to me it's the rarity, the scarcity value. Mark jump in here. Whiskey, Bill, whiskey of course can be sold freely within the 28 nation European Union Absolutely. which leads to the obvious question how much of a disaster for the Scottish industry would it be if Britain left the EU? Well, I think the first thing I would say is that, you know, as an industry, we've faced many ups and downs over the last uh, 150, 200 years or so. So I think we are quite a resilient industry. But, you know, obviously we've had spectacular growth over the last 20 years or so. So anything that would impact negatively on trade, of course, we wouldn't welcome it. Bill, is vodka dead? Long live whiskey. Is that the motto for the next five years? <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as to say vodka's dead, but certainly I would say long live whiskey.